Hi, my name is Dr. Tashan, and in this video I'd like to go over the difference quotient. The difference quotient is represented right here, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The difference quotient represents a rate of change. It's an algebraic expression used in function notation. It represents a rate of change. For example, velocity is a rate of change because it's change in position over change in time. Slope of a line is a rate of change because it's rise over run. So before we do our example involving the difference quotient, I'd like to show you where the difference quotient, where this notation comes from. So here I have an xy plane drawn on the board, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. I'm going to just go ahead and draw a line in my xy plane. It's the linear function. All right, so here's a line in my xy plane. I would like to go ahead and hand down plot two points on this line and give them a name. So I'm going to put my first point right here. Okay, so I'm going to plot this point and I need to name this point. So the x-coordinate, I don't know, but you know, we're just wherever it happens to be on the x-axis, let's just call the x-coordinate x to give it just, call it x, arbitrary x. All right? and then it's corresponding y-coordinate. Well, it's on the y-axis. You think maybe we could call it y. Well, let's call it y, but let's call it y in function notation. y is f of x, so let's call it f of x. All right, this is how I make my low, uh, lowercase f. So this is f of x. So this point right here, the name I'm going to give this point right here is going to be x for the x-coordinate, f of x for the y-coordinate. There's my x, y, or my x, f of x for this point. Now, let's name another point. Let me take another point and put this other point right up here, okay? I want to give this point a name. What do I call the x-coordinate? Well, the x-coordinate name I'm going to give it, it just depends how far this x-coordinate is away from this first one, okay? So whatever this distance happens to be, that's what I need to name this, this point over here. We don't know what the distance is. Um, if the distance was 3, then I would call this point over here x plus 3 because it's 3 units beyond my original. But we don't know how far away it is. So instead of using a, a number, we don't know what the distance is. We're going to let's use h. h to represent the distance between these two points along the x-axis. So if this point over here is x and we go h units to get to our next point, then x plus h would be the x-coordinate for this point right here. x plus h, which means its corresponding y-coordinate would be the function value at x plus h. It would be f of x plus h. All right. So this point right here, given that a name, is going to be x plus h for the x-coordinate, and then my y-coordinate, f of the function value at x plus h for the y-coordinate. So here are my two points with their given names. Now all I want to do next is I want to go ahead and take these two points. I want to find the slope of the line. And if I have two points on the line, I can find the slope of a line. To find the slope of a line, rise over run, what I need to do is I need to subtract the y-coordinates, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This is all I need to do to find the slope of a line. I'm going to find the slope of my line. Given these two points here, I'm going to go ahead and compute the slope. Okay, slope, remember, being rise over run, change in y over change in x, it's a rate of change. So the slope of this line, well, I'm going to take the y2, so I'm going to take my f of x plus h, okay, all right, minus y1, which is f of x, okay, and all this goes over my x sub 2, which is x plus h, minus x sub 1, which is x, okay, so slope of the line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives me the slope of a line. Now, if you look in the denominator here, I can simplify my denominator. The x's cancel out. So the slope of my line given here, my slope is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x, and all this is over h. Here is my slope of a line. It represents my rate of change, rise over run, and what do you know? It's exactly my difference quotient. This is where the notation comes from. It represents a rate of change. It is an algebraic foundational algebraic piece that's going to be used in differential calculus when you get to differential calculus. So anyways, let's go ahead and take our difference quotient and apply it to this example. So this example, we want to go ahead and compute the difference quotient for 
the function given 5x minus 3. So we can see it, it, how you would apply this. The first thing we want to do is we want to take our function f of x and we want to write f of x plus h. That means we're going to take the x's in the function. We want to take the x's in the function and we want to replace the x's with x plus h. Okay, so I'll put a bracket to represent. So you have 5, the x needs to be replaced with x plus h and then your minus 3. So here is the function. You're writing the entire function, 5x minus 3, but you're taking the x out and replacing it with x plus h. Okay? From that, you're going to subtract the function. All right? Just you do to take the exact function and bring it down, but we need grouping symbols. We have two terms in the function, so you're going to have to distribute the negative sign to each term in the, in the uh, function. So you just bring down the 5x minus 3, and then all this goes over h. Okay. So next we want to go ahead and just expand the numerator. Expand the numerator. So you can see we want to distribute the 5 to the x and the h in the parentheses. So you have 5x and we have 5h. Bring down the subtract 3. And then over here you want to subtract or you want to distribute the subtraction sign to each term in the bracket. So you have subtract the 5x and then minus a negative positive 3 here. All this is over h. All right, and then we collect like terms. So when you collect like terms, 5x and you're taking 5x's away, you can see that this is a positive 5x and a negative 5x. So the 5x's are gone, okay? Also notice the threes. So you have a negative three here and you have a positive three here. So the threes are gonna cancel out and they're gone. So what do we have left over in the numerator? We have 5h in the numerator. We have an h in the denominator and the h is canceled. So our final answer is five. And so the rate of change for this example, number one right here, 5x minus 3, the rate of change is 5. So the answer is 5. And just to note, the function given to us is a linear function. Okay, The function 5x minus 3, um, f of x equals 5x minus 3. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. f of x is the same thing as y. This is the same thing as saying y equals 5x minus 3. Okay, so y equals 5x minus 3, and if you look at this, this is an equation of a line. Equation of a line is y equals mx plus b form. This is the equation of a line. The slope of this line is 5. 5 is well, the rate of change. The slope of the line is 5, and what do we do here? It computed the slope for us okay. in a long process, but it computed the slope using function notation because the difference quotient represents uh, represents a rate of change. It represents the slope or a rate of change of a given function. If you have a linear function, the rate of change will always be a constant. So I hope this helps with any understanding of the difference quotient, where it comes from in a simple example. I will come back in another video and do more, uh, more examples of functions that are not linear. Thank you for watching.